man. How did this Thank come you. about? I mean, it's something that I've had on my vision board for years because, you know, my mother was an English teacher. And, like, for me, reading is what helped me to transcend my circumstances. You know, I, um, I came up. You know, my mother was Jehovah Witness too, so I came up reading Watchtowers and Awakes, and then my mother she was would, Jehovah Witness. Jehovah Witness, and then my mom would tell me to read things that don't pertain to me, so I'd be reading like Beverly Clearly and Judy Bloom books, and then you know my father was a witness too, but my father was in the Islam, so he was the one like mm. his message to the black man by Elijah Muhammad, his autobiography of Malcolm X. So I was always constantly reading, and then you know when when you get into hip hop. Oh, when you're studying the five percent teachings of, of 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 Islam, you know one of the first books you get is from Niggas to Gods. So yes, by Akil, which I love. That changes your whole perspective on everything. And then you know when you get into hip hop, you start hearing about different books. Forty Eight Laws of Power. You hear Jay Z reference the Seat of the Soul by Gary Zukav. You start reading all the this Art stuff. of War, Art of Sun War Tzu. by Sun Tzu. Like you just start taking all of this stuff in. So it's like I always wanted to write a book because for me, hip hop music and literature is what gave me that imagination to dream bigger than the dirt road that I was on in Monk's Corner. So I always wanted to write a book. Always. My whole existence, I always wanted to write a book. I want to read this quote that you, that you wrote, man, about this book. I wrote this for the dreamers, for the optimists. This book isn't for pessimists. This book is about embracing who you are and what you are, regardless of race, gender, sexuality, and class. God gave you the privilege of this thing called life. So regardless of what the society tells you that you can't do and what you don't have to understand, you lack nothing. God gave you everything you need to succeed. Let's talk about that. Absolutely. I mean, you know, that's like the whole concept of black privilege is a play on the term white privilege. Yes. And, you know, white privilege is very real. Yes. You know, it's funny because I think about when me and you sat here like, how long ago was that? Four about, or five? About, about two, three, three, three and a half, nah, four years Nah, longer ago. than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when it, was, it, was, it was like about a year before Black Lives Matter. About a year before yeah. Black Lives Matter. And I was one of those people that was like uh, in the whole haze of Barack Obama. So I wasn't really accepting the whole concept of white privilege. I knew it existed. Right. But I just knew like I'm not letting that shit stop me right. at all. But we know white privilege is very, very, very real. But I think that one thing that happens, especially with the white privilege and you talk about white supremacy and especially now like you this racist I mean Donald it, Trump is, on, is, a, the bi- right. is the fucking main product absolutely. of ra- white privilege absolutely racism bigotry everywhere but I think sometimes that gives us a black inferiority complex mm. you know and it makes us feel like we're lesser than so what I'm saying with black privilege is number one first and foremost it's a privilege to be black it's a privilege and it's an honor to be black. Your black skin is not a burden. Your black skin is not a liability. Your black skin is your strength. That's number right. one. And I'm saying that, you know, when you talk about white privilege, you're talking about something systemic. When you talk about black privilege, to me, you're talking about something spiritual. Right. I feel like we're more in tune with a divine system that helps us to prosper in spite of everything that we faced here in this country. Because, I mean, if you think about it, what else did slaves have? What else did they have with during you know the civil rights era when they was fighting segregation? What else did they have to lean on other than a higher power? Right. So I feel like that's what their, we, their sense of compassion, their sense of intuition, absolutely, the sense of innovation, absolutely, the sense of creating, absolutely. when you had nothing, creating when you have nothing. And that's what I feel like we are. I just feel like I grew up on, <clears throat> I grew up with, you know, black pride, right, black power. You know, uh, to, to black man is God, black women are queens, black men are kings. Like, I grew up on that. So I feel like, you know, with that, that title, black privilege, like, why are we giving white people all the power? Right. Like, we, they got what they got, no doubt. Right. But what, we special, too. Now, let me ask you something, man. In, in, our, in our past conversations, and I was thinking about it today, man, I definitely understand what you mean. I definitely think that, 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 that we as 